Okay, this one is just converting um, tablespoons to mLs. How is everybody with that? Remember, with the tablespoon, there's a B in it. That means there be more mLs, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's 15 mLs to every tablespoon. So yeah. for these, you have to take the 12 and multiply it by the number of mLs, which is 15. So 12 times 15 here. And you should get 180. Now, the reason why we have you do this is because sometimes on a question or on a doctor's order, the doctor will order the medication in tablespoons or teaspoons. You have to convert it to mLs before you can convert it to a tablespoon or a teaspoon. So you got to know this for that. All right, our next one's asking us about milliliters that the patient consumed. Okay, so for me, I'm going to look and see first is all my fluid. I'm looking for fluid, right? And fluid is anything that is liquid at room temperature. So that could be tea, soda, juice, water, ice jello ice cream all those things when you sit it out on the table are going to come to a liquid state right mm -hmm. yes okay you won't really see pudding in any of these exams okay i don't put them in there pudding you're going to go by what your facility says because everybody says something different when it comes to pudding it is liquid at room temperature, but some people classify it as a solid. The same thing with cream wheat, okay? Yesterday, we had a discussion about that because it was on one of these tests. Cream wheat is a solid. If you go to, you know, like a GI doctor and they're going to do an exam, and likely if you ate pudding or cream wheat, they're not going to do it. They're going to cancel that procedure if they told you to only consume liquids more than likely because they're going to call it too solid. So we really want it to be sort of liquidy at room temperature, okay? Ice also is always equal to half, okay? So what does that mean? If I have one cup of ice at room temperature, it's going to be equal to half a cup. Mm -hmm. So when I do the calculation for the ice, if I have eight ounces, I'm only using four ounces of that. All Ms. right. So this here, is, oh, go ahead. Is sherbet considered ice cream like that? Yeah, sherbet is going to come down to room temperature. Okay. Now, the difference between ice, popsicles, and ice cream is this. If you notice, when you get ice out of the dispenser, right? Like normally there's nothing on there to tell you how much ice it is. You would have to put it in a measuring cup and measure it. And if you let that ice melt, you're gonna see if you had eight ounces in there. And you know this, because when you put your ice in a cup and it melts down, right? You only got a little bit of water in there. Mm -hmm. Popsicles and ice cream are not the same because they have other content in there. That gives them a heavier weight. So usually if you look at a popsicle, it'll tell you right on the side that it's equal to three ounces or four ounces. The same thing if you have a container of ice cream. If you go, if you work a diet, if you ever work dietary or as a CNA in the hospital, you notice that all those little containers have a certain amount of ounces on them or MLs, one of the two. And that's what it's worth, whatever it says on that container, Okay. Um, ice is the only one that's worth half when it's melted. Okay. Mm -hmm. We good with that. All right. So here we only have ounces to calculate. So I would add them all up. Six plus six is 12 and 10 is 22 and four is 26 total ounces. Right. Anybody get anything different? No, no, sir. And then I know that there's 30 mLs in every ounce. Yeah. So now I have to take my total number of ounces and multiply that 
times how many mLs each ounce is worth. And that's 30. So mm -hmm. whatever we got there, 6 and 6, 12, 22, and 4 is 26 times 30. What'd you get? 780. Perfect. Rock stars right there already. You know, Ms. Souk, um, it's funny because Wednesday night on the test, there was this question and quite a few of us got it wrong. You know, they just got added up the ounces, but all of us multiplied by 30. We all knew that. Is there, say, is there something that the computer- It was on the test you took Friday? Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. All right, let me look. Okay, everybody can see the problem? Yes. So what did we get for this one? 2,250. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, if I make an error on the test, because sometimes I do, I write these tests sometimes late at night, I'll give the question back or I'll adjust it for the error. It's not that often, but once in a while I do make an error. All right, here we go. We're going from kilograms to pounds. What are we going to do? Multiply by 2.2. Good. So you already know if you took 43 and multiply <clears throat> it just by two. And I'm just saying, do little steps for yourself, common sense stuff. If you took 43 without a calculator <clears throat> and you multiplied it by two, what are you going to get? 86. 86. Like 86, right? So you already know your weight should be above 86 because you're doing 2.2, right? Mm -hmm. So it should be a little bit above 86. Mm -hmm. And we got 95 here, right? Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay, because you're rounding it up. Everybody knows how to do the rounding? Yes. 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 Five and above, move to the next. Okay, and we had a six there, 94.6. We're going to the whole number, so that four is going to go up to a five. All right, now here's an example where the pharmacy is ordering um, the drug in mLs, okay, or in uh, teaspoons, and you got to figure out how many teaspoons. Three. Right. So first thing you have to do is just do your actual math. So if you have 30 MEQs per 15 ml and you're giving 30 MEQs, right? 30 divided by 30 is one, right? Mm -hmm. Times your 15 and you're giving teaspoons. Mm -hmm. Each teaspoon is worth what? Five ml. Five. Okay, I'm just explaining this out in case somebody doesn't understand and they don't want to ask. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have um, our five times three gives us 15, 15, right? Or 15 divided by five equals three. Either way you do it, you're going to end up with three teaspoons, right? Yes, yes. Anybody not understand that concept? Mm -mm. So if you're giving those teaspoons, the first thing you have to remember is you're giving what? A dose, right? Right. Because that's all you're going to give as a nurse is a dose. So a dose is always calculated, desired over half. Your desired is 30. On hand, you have 30 per 15. Again, a lot of this is reading the question from the bottom two. If you read the question from the bottom, it tells you what they want from the order. All right. So here it's telling you you have a ruler in centimeters and it wants to know how many centimeters you have an order for nitro in inches. So if you're going from inches to centimeters, what are you going to do? You multiply. Multiply by 2.54, right? Mm hmm so you already know four times two is eight, right? Yes. Now it's going to be somewhere a little above eight, right? Because you're doing four times 2.54. Oh. So it's probably going to be somewhere, you know, um, a little bit above that because it's almost another half. 
So it's probably going to be somewhere around 12-ish or something. 10.616. Okay, there you go. You know you're in the ballpark range just doing a little math in your head to say, hey, if I had to do this, you're still going to use your calculator and calculate it out. But this is just kind of a way of double checking yourself. You already know centimeters should be bigger than inches. On these questions, read the last statement. And the last statement says, how many mLs will the nurse give? If you are giving mLs, what are you giving? A dose. A dose, okay? So for dose, we do desired over half, okay? So what is our desired dose? 25 mLs. Per nope. 5 mLs. 15 milligrams. It's always what we have ordered. Our desired dose is always what is ordered. Okay? Desire what did the doctor milligrams. order? 25. He did not. 15, 15 milligrams. Milligrams. The doctor ordered oh, 50. 50. Right. Okay? 50 it says right there, 50 yeah. is ordered. Yeah. Okay? That goes on the top. Okay. What do you have on hand? 25 milligrams. Per five. Say it right, please. 25, 25 per milligram five. per five milliliters. Right, because that's your vehicle, that five, right? Yes. Yes. You got to read it right yeah. and set it up right or you'll get the answer wrong. So if this is our desired dose, can you see the whiteboard? Yes. This is what we have on hand. We need, we need to get to mLs, right? Right. So multiply by five. This is going to cross out. Mm -hmm. You already know 25 goes in there twice. Mm -hmm. 10 mLs. And you take it times your vehicle. So important that you read the order right. Okay, you can't read doctor's orders from the top. If you do, you're going to get them wrong every time. Unless you really know your math. This will be important when you get to those more complicated ones, okay? So look what all this has in it. But what do you actually need out of there? If you're giving a dose, all you need is what you have on hand and what your desired order is. Okay. All right. Everybody got 10? Yes. Yes. You can see the question again? Or you still see the whiteboard? Yes. Questions. We got the questions. Okay. Here's another one. Now, this says how many tablets will the nurse give? Okay. So if you're going to give tablets, what are you giving? A dose. A dose. So the formula is? Desired over half. Okay. What's the problem here? You got milligram and then a microgram. Milligram and microgram. Okay, mm -hmm. so your 0 0.05 milligrams is your desired dose, yes? Yes, okay. yes. And what you have on hand is 25 MCG. Your, what you have on hand, okay? And that's 25 micrograms per tap. Going back to the whiteboard. That would be 50 over 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my problem up. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what my desired dose is. This is what I have on hand.
I have to convert one of these. Now, it doesn't matter which one you convert. You can see my whiteboard, right? Yes. In real life, you can't yes. convert what you have on hand because I, if I have micrograms on hand, I can't make it milligrams, okay? Mm -hmm. On here, it doesn't matter because you're just doing math. So for me, I probably would get rid of the decimal. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm going from milligrams to micrograms, I'm going to the right. Whenever I go to the right, I'm going to act like a rabbit and multiply. Yes. 5,000. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I'm going to take this times 1,000. Yeah. Okay. The other easy way to do this is move your decimal three times. Two, One, two, two three. Yeah. And that's yeah. actually a way that you can double check yourself. So if I did that, what am I going to end up with? 50, 50 milligrams, 50. right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you got? 50 yes. Yes. micrograms? Yes. Okay. Now I just have 50 divided by 25, right? Because this crosses out. Two. Again, what's it going to be? Two, Two tablets. Come on. Yep. Two yeah, it is. Okay, excellent. Don't make so, it harder than it is. All right, this is just asking for the strength. Now, this is the only time that you would actually have to put the milligrams on the statement. Any other time, you don't. And the reason why we only have you put the number, so when it says put numerical value only, that just means put the number there. And the reason why we do that is because that's what the NCLEX calls for. And here's another thing. If you mess up and you put two mLs and it should be two milligrams, guess what? You fail. It's wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so do yourself some justice. It's giving you a chance just to put the number there. Just put the number there. But here you're going to put the strength, right? Which is what? Uh, 500 milligrams, good. Yeah. And this is asking for the trade name. Now, this one has that little R in the circle behind it. That's a trademark that's issued by the Library of Congress. When anybody puts a patent on a medication, that means no one can else can make this medication until that patent expires, which is usually about two years. So like Tylenol originally made this medication, Tylenol, right? Acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. They put the patent on it. They got that little trademark on it. For the first two years, no one could actually make that drug. Now the two years is gone. Tylenol still has the patent mark for Tylenol on it. But you notice that now we have CVS, uh, mm -hmm. acetaminophen, Walgreens, acetaminophen. And it's almost mm -hmm. the same chemical structure. But if you match it up on the bottle, there's always some little change in it about the chemical structure. It's not exactly like the patent formula. Mm -hmm. and the misoprostol is your um, generic name yeah. on these it used to be that they only put the generic name in small letters like this but now you don't see that now they'll put it any old way so be careful when you're writing the generic names okay. but it's just not going to have a trademark behind it and you have to spell it right it's spelled on the label for you so all you have to do is read it from the label and type it in. If you spell it wrong, you're going to get it wrong. So, Miss Loach, yes. Quick, quick question: Like, if the medication, like Keflex, Keflex is in all capital, does that matter? Does it have the R behind it? Yes, it does. Then it's a trade name. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you put it in caps, little okay. letters, whatever. If you put it, let's the way you type it in. As long as you spell it right, you'll get it mm -hmm. right. Because okay. we adjust the exam for that. Okay. As long as you spell it right, and as long as you put the right name there. Okay. All right, now let's look at the next one. Okay, this is a drip factor. All right, so go ahead and take your numbers out. How do you know it's a drip factor? It's asking you drops per minute. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see drops per minute, you need three things out of this problem. So whatever has mLs next to it, which is what? Your, what you should infuse. Your volume. Whatever has mLs next to it, which is what? What number? 
One time is in 200 milliliters. Okay. 500. So you need that. No. You need your eight hours because that's your time, right? Mm -hmm. And you need your drop factor. What's your drop factor here? 60. 60. Whenever it says micro or PD, your drop factor is automatically 60. PD or micro. Everything else is going to be a macro drip. So they'll give you the number. 10, 20, 15. You need to know this formula. And this formula is total volume over total time in minutes times your drop factor. Always a whole number. That is your formula. As soon as I see drip factor, I know this, so I never get these wrong. Because if you don't know that, you're going to get these wrong. All right? So our total volume, we just wrote it down, was 1,200 mLs. Mm -hmm. Our time is eight hours, and that has to be in minutes. So we're going to multiply that by 60, and our time is going to be 480 minutes. Yep. And our drip factor is 60. Yep. Okay, all you have to do now is the math. You already know this is going to go in there a little less than three times because 400 goes into 1,200 three times, right? Just mm -hmm. simple basic math rules. All right, so we got 2.5 times that 480 would go in there. Times your 60. 150. 150. 150. Drops per minute. Drops, yeah. You're just going to write the 150, but that would be how that would be written if you were writing it out. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Sue, um, drip questions will always be a whole number. Always. You can't give a partial drop. Partial drip. Right. But you know, saying, really, I shouldn't even tell you guys to round to the nearest whole number there. You, that right. should just be automatic. Yes. You know, what I mean is on the test, like we're only going to be putting, we'll never have to put GTT slash minute. Drop Correct. Minute. You'll only put that 150. Okay. Because that's what I got you See, wrong. I put the GTT per minute there for you. You see how it's there next to the box? Mm-hmm. That's already there for you. All you have to do is slap the number in. Mm -hmm. That's what I did wrong. <laughs> you have to do this on every question, just the number. The only one you'll put a milligram on is that one that we just did on the label where it's asking you strength. That's why you never use milligrams when you solve these because milligrams is a strength. You can't use a strength to solve a problem like this. Okay, here's another drop factor. Now, let me show you a little trick on this one. Okay? Mm -hmm. So remember that we have total volume over total minutes times the drop factor here, right? Right. Now, Miss Sue, this is a little confusing because I don't see a time and I see two volumes. I see one liter, write it down. Mm -hmm. And I see 125 mLs per hour. Write it down. And I see a drop factor of 15. Write it down. Let's go to the whiteboard. So I always tell you to use total volume for these, and your total volume is 1,000 mLs, okay? Mm -hmm. You can see the whiteboard? Yes. Mm -hmm. The problem is it didn't give you a time. Yeah. Okay? But it's running at 125 mLs an hour. So that really is giving you a volume and a time. So if you wanted to cheat and do this question, it's a, a good cheat, an allowed cheat. 
You can take the volume of 125, and you know that you have 125 in an hour, so you can use your 60 minutes there. Okay. And just multiply it times your drip factor, which is 15, okay? And that's going to give you your answer. However, if you were using it the way this is written out and you have a thousand mLs and you know that it's running at 125 an hour, then you know it's running over eight hours, correct? Mm -hmm. 1,000 divided by 125 is eight. Times 50. And if we took eight times 60, we would get 480 minutes. So if we took the total volume of the 1,000, we put it over the 480 minutes and we multiplied it by 15, we're gonna get the same answer. So go ahead and do both problems. Mm. This just gave you a little cheat, okay? Because it gave you this info, you could use it to solve without taking this extra step. But if you use the thousand, you have to take this extra step. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same answer. Okay, but in the formula, they gave you this. So if they give you this, you can use this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and cut this step out. These are steps, okay? When I do formulas, they're steps. Now, I do shortcut formulas because I like keep it simple. Stupid math, I can't do a dimensional analysis. It's too much for my brain. My brain goes way too fast. I can't slow it down to there. It just doesn't work for me. So when you're doing these problems, you have to be able to see this within the problem. You have to be able to see the formulas. And this is why I'm so strict when I ask you about the formulas. I expect you to know the formula because you have to see that formula when you ask yourself the question at the bottom there. So let's go back to the question again. So when it asks you for flow rates per minute, right away, you have to see that formula. You have to know, okay, I need the total volume. I need my total time in minutes and I need my drop factor. And then if you look here, you either have this volume here with a time or you'll have this, which just has it broken down for you already. Okay, this is going at 125 mLs over one hour. Yes, but over 60 minutes, that helps me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that confusing at all for anyone? At first it was. Okay, but you understand now why I use what I use for this problem. Because my thing is, I'm going to solve the problem the easiest way I can. Using the formulas that I know that work. So you got to know your formulas. Get to learn your formulas because you're going to need these as you continue on. These basic formulas are going to help you solve the harder math. Yeah, I figured it out the first way that she did it. Okay. What'd you get? Did you get 31? Yes. Yes. Oh, rock stars there. I think this is just asking for the form. Okay, so as long as you put suppositories, suppositories, I think she gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, now this question is just asking about what? How many? No, no, look at what the last thing says the here. Dose. What's the last thing that it says here? Dose. I mean, like milligrams. It's dose. asking about a dose. And you already know that formula, right? Mm -hmm. What is it? Desired over half, half times, half times, times the crowd. Desired over half times the vehicle. Now, for this particular thing, okay, you don't have an ordered dose. What you have is you have to calculate that desired dose. Mm -hmm. And you're going to calculate it based on the client's weight, and you're going to leave everything in the calculator here. So you're just going to take your 55. What you have to look closely at here is look at how it's ordered. So this one is ordered five milligrams per kilogram per dose. It could say per day. Okay. 
So look closely at that because that is a clue to sometimes calculating your answer. For you guys, you'll just see these simple ones. But as you grow, as the math gets harder, you're going to see that change. So we're going to take our 55 divided by 2.2 and multiply it times the ordered dose, which is five. And you should have got 125 milligrams. Yes. Perfect. You can see the question, right? Yes. Okay, sometimes I forget to switch. All right, let's see if you can do this one on your own. <clears throat> Can you pull it up a little bit, Ms. Lush? Okay. If the three point nine do round. Nearest thing. Okay, so I heard 53.9. Did everybody get that? Yes. yes. All right, excellent. 53.9. All right, that was it on there. Let me pull some other stuff up. We got a few more minutes. All right, any one of these that you guys have uh, more of a problem with than others? Let's do a couple of these. Yeah. We did some drip factors. These are IV flow rates. Is it like a multiple step one? There are a couple of them that are multiple steps. Yeah, it doesn't... So let's look at the first ones and then okay. we'll go to the multiple step ones, okay? Thanks. Okay, can you see the questions? Yes. Yeah. All right. So for these ones here, you just, it's asking for the hourly rate. You just have to take your total volume and divide it by the number of hours. 50. Okay, so you're saying the first one is 50. What about the second one? 2,000. And I'm going to sit here on these two for a second so everybody has time I'm to calculate. Too. Okay, so when you're done, say done so I know everybody got through it. Done. Uh, done. Yes. Done. Everybody's good? Yeah, I signed that one. Okay. So everybody got 50 on the first one and 42 on the second one, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, how about this one? It's 28. Okay, let's look at this one on the whiteboard. Oh, I'm doing the next one. Oh, I was doing the next one. That one's two point three. Okay, so here is your issue. You have the hundred mLs, right? But this has to be over the number of hours. Seven point five. And your volume is in minutes. Okay. So you have to convert this to an hourly rate. 
All right. So we already know that 30 minutes is a half hour, right? You already know that mm -hmm. in your brain. And mm -hmm. that's fine because that's 0 0.5 and that's mm -hmm. easy. Okay. Yeah. But what if it was 48 minutes? Then what would you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. So technically, if you just took 30 and divided by 60, that's going to give you 0 0.5, right? Mm hmm. You could do the same thing. You take the 48 divided by 60, and that would give you the fraction of the hour. But there's an easier way you can do this. And so, you know, I show you both ways because I want you to understand both ways so it you can figure out which one you want to use. Okay, so if I took 100 divided by 0 0.5, it's going to give me 200. Mm -hmm. Right? so <laughs> fine. I could also take 100, divide it by 30, and multiply it by 60. That converts this into an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. I could do the same thing if I had the 48 minutes. 100 divided by 48 times 60. Okay, that's going to convert this to an hourly rate. So see what you get there. Do you still get 200? 100 divided by 30 times 60. Yeah. You still get 200, right? Yes. Yes. Same thing here. If I take 48 and divide it by 60, what's it give me? Gives me 0 0.8. So let's take 100 and divide it by 0 0.8. And what'd you get? Should have got 125. 125. Okay. Now let's take 100 divided by 48 and multiply it by 60. 125. Okay. So Thank that's you. why if I have to do MLs per hour and my time is in minutes, I'll just put my time over the minutes, multiply it by 60, and that's going to give me my answer. Mm -hmm. That's the quicker way to do it so that, you know, you don't have to go through extra steps. Everybody understand that concept? Yes. 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 Okay, let's go back to the questions. And I want you to do number, whatever this one is, doctor orders 0 0.8 liters. Okay. Now, what's the th first thing you have to do here? Invert, liters. Invert your liters to milliliters because yeah. you're going to mLs per hour. So don't forget that step. And you can either multiply by a thousand because you're going to the right. When you go into the right, you're going to act like a rabbit and multiply, or you can just move your decimal two places, and that's still going to give you 800 mLs, right? Yeah. Yes. You can always double check yourself doing both ways, multiply and move your decimal. Just double check yourself. Okay, so you have 800 milliliters divided by 45 minutes, or... That would be 0 0.75 if you want to use the fraction of the hour. <laughs> and what'd you get? A thousand sixty six point point seven. 1,066.6 you got, right? Point right. Six, yes. Six, point seven, if got, if it's so if you had to pick an answer over there, which one does that round up to? Mm, I would say oh, 1,067. C. Great. 16. Perfect. Um, Do you see why? Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Anybody okay. have a problem understanding why that rounded to 106.7? Okay. It depends on what the author says, okay? Let's just look at the number real quick. In this case, they wanted you to round it to the nearest whole number, and you would have been able to determine that by the answers on the board, okay? But sometimes the author will tell you round it to the nearest whole number, round it to the nearest tenth, okay? So let's look at what we had here. Okay. 
We had one zero four six six point six six six, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. If I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, this is going to dictate. This is the time. Right. So or it might say the number nearest to the decimal. So it might call it either one, the nearest tenth or the number nearest to the decimal. This is your one hundredth, and if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, this is going to dictate. Right. And this is my one thousandth. If I'm rounding to the nearest one hundredth, this is going to dictate. Okay, everybody go with that? Yes, thanks. On there, there were no other numbers even close to that. Okay, here you go with the next one. Do the next one. Good morning, Miss Loge. Good morning. Um, the time set for us was 10 a.m. Okay, it's 9.57. It's 9.57. Yeah, I know. By joining in now, we noticed that the class has started for a while. It did. Are you sure about that? Yeah. So I'm doing L to R. Aren't you health assessment? Health assessment. Okay. Health assessment starts at 10. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm a smart Alex, so, you know. All right. It wouldn't be me if I wasn't. <laughs> Okay, so now what are you going to use here to set up your formula, guys? 250 milliliters. Okay, why aren't you using the 300? Because that's one milliliter per strength. hour. That's because a that's a strength. Thank you, whoever said that. It has milligrams next to it. It's a strength. You don't need it. So this is going to be total volume over your time, right? Yes. All right. And you're calculating mLs per hour, so you're going to use that little trick I just showed you unless you want to do it the long way. Either way works for me. I don't care, as long as you get the right answer. So it's what your level of comfort is there. One eighty seven point five. Okay, great. Everybody got that? Yes. Yes, 187.5. Yeah, 187.5. Perfect. All right, and then these ones, you're going to go right back to the way you were doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what? Mm -hmm. You're looking for mLs per hour, your time is in hours, and you have your volume. That's 300 over 4. Good. 75 million per hour. 75. Okay. Anything else you guys want me to go over? Quick question. Yes. When it's in, like, it's in minutes, right? It's like 80 minutes, and then you want it in an hour. So I'm just going to say um, 80 divided 60. You could. You could. Or you could do it the way I just showed you. Let's go back to the screen. Just whatever you do, do it consistently. So if you decide that's how you're going to do the calculation, then do it consistently. So 80 divided by 60 equals what? 80 divided by 60. Uh, 1.333. 1. 1. <laughs> so then you have to use all those 1.333s in your calculator. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you take your 250 and divide it, it has to be by the 1.33333. Or yeah. you can just do the 250 divided by 80 times 60. 60. Either way, oh. you're going to get the same answer. Oh, uh, okay. Okay? You're, mm -hmm. When you multiply it by 60 here, you're converting it to the hourly rate. Okay. Come on, yeah. Okay, other questions? No. Nope. All right, that's it for L to R then. I'm going to end this recording Thank so you. I can post it later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Assessment's going to start. Thank you. You're welcome. <gasps>